Hi guys, welcome back to Cool Movie Ratings, and today we are done with the final older Rocky slash Creed movie, and today we're reviewing Creed 2, so I must say before I start this, I actually have seen Creed 3 while reviewing this movie, because I actually f watched Creed 3 right before I finished Creed 2, so um, you guys, I'm gonna record them back to back, but first I'm doing Creed 2, and I gotta say, this was my favorite Creed movie, one of my favorite Rocky movies for a long time, and after these this rewatch i think it's gonna go down but not much because i still like every single movie in this franchise decently to just absolutely loving it some of my favorite movies of all time here and i still think creed 2 is better than creed 1 and i'll give my thoughts on creed 3 um probably the day after you'll see this review and um creed 2 is just such a great sequel because i absolutely love rocky 4 and you get um, two characters from Rocky IV, you get Ivan Drago, and I forget his wife's name, but you get his wife back here. And the main villain of this movie is Drago's son. I think that adds a lot of tension to the characters, because obviously it was Drago that killed Apollo, and so the son's fighting, you're kind of like, have it in the back of your mind, there's no way that um, Adonis will die in this one, but there's that little thought in the back of your head, maybe it's gonna happen, but um, I really like that they um, went with that because I love um, Drago, but it's kind of weird because he's kind of not that much of a terrible guy in this one. And this is where you kind of see, like, um, Drago isn't really a terrible, terrible... Like, um, Ivan Drago is not a really terrible, terrible person. And um, because you can see, like, at the end when he throws in the towel for his son, he cares about him. And I like that you get a slight redemption because I feel like... He was, you could kind of tell from Rocky IV, he was being played. He really wasn't evil, kind of like uh, Mr. T or some of the other villains. He was kind of being played by his wife, and he's once again getting played by his wife in this one. And um, I don't even remember the son's name off the top of my head. Um, I'll probably remember it later. But um, I think that um, the um, Drago's son is a, a pretty good villain. And this movie kind of copies Rocky II with the arc of... Um, not arc, but just um, the plot point that um, Creed and um, Bianca are going to have a child. And um, it is a little, it's like a really sad scene when um, they're trying to hear, or they're trying to see if the baby's deaf and it ends up being deaf. And I kind of forgot because I hadn't seen that half before I saw Creed 3. And um, I was a little bit confused by that in Creed 3 because I completely forgot about it. Because I watched this movie right when it came out on streaming. So that was probably four or five years ago. And, um, yeah, but, um, I still absolutely love this movie. And I, one thing I gotta say that's kind of a big negative, I feel like this is the first one where Rocky feels kind of pointless. And looking back in hindsight, cause I was super mad that Sylvester Sloan was gonna be in Creed 3, because I was like, oh, this isn't Rocky anymore. But now that I've seen Creed 3 in hindsight, I think that, um, Creed really kind of probably should have been its own thing, like, a spinoff to Rocky. I think uh, Rocky should have been in the first one. He needs to make appearances, but he doesn't need to be a main character. He shouldn't be marketed as one of the main characters, because I feel like in Creed 2, he's slightly pointless, because um, I feel like once, basically, Rocky's whole thing um, in the movie is, one, he has to see his son, which that part's great. I love that we get um, Milo uh, Vin. Fintum Miglia, I don't know how to say the last name, back in the movie at the end. That's the one good thing that comes with, like, Rocky's character, which I think would be great if we just had, like, side plots with him. And, um, because it, this route, this movie takes the route of Rocky three, where he, um, Adonis loses in the first half and comes back. Well, he doesn't lose, he actually wins, but by, um, Drago's son being, uh, Victor is his name, Victor Drago is disqualified, and so he doesn't really win, and he wants to rematch him for um, to actually see who will win. And um, totally, Rocky Three wins, and um, I really do like that. Um, um, what's uh, Ivan Drago throws in the towel at the end because I'm kind of glad that um, he didn't go all the way. Because then for a second when he's getting punched and punched, you're like, oh my god, is he gonna be a part of the Creed? And um, that would have been very interesting and like. I'll switch up the roles, but, um, I'm glad they didn't go with that, because Victor, if you've seen Creed 3, he has a part in it, and he's great in it, but, um, I think that Creed 3 is a great movie, and, um, the score in both Creed movies, I feel isn't as great as Bill Conti's work, obviously, but, 
um, I, I think that, um, they definitely have their moments. Like, I think I realized this time that there's like a theme for Creed that's really cool. And I'm, it might be a rendition of the Rocky theme. I just don't realize, but, um, it's got a really cool theme, but, um, I wouldn't say forgettable score, but more on the average side. And, um, I think that, I think the director's name is Steve Cappell Jr. And I know Ryan Coogler, the director of the first Creed was still heavily involved with this one. And um, you do feel like it's made by the same people. And Michael B. Jordan continues to be amazing as this role. And I think that this is definitely going to be his best role ever, even though he's done a lot of other very notable things. And um, I'm really excited um, to continue with this um, series. But Creed 2, this is still my favorite out of the first and second one. And um, I'm excited to talk to you guys about the third one. But those are my thoughts on Creed 2. Let me know down below. Do you think Rock, Rocky's kind of wasting this one? Do you kind of wish that he was axed in this one? Or do you like him in this one? Do you think they should have given him a more um, important part in this movie? But thank you guys so much for watching this cool movie ratings video. And I will see you guys later. Bye, guys.